An estimated two to three million child deaths from vaccine preventable diseases are averted each year through immunisation. Progress has been remarkable in the past decade, but a greater effort needs to be made to consolidate and expand these achievements. In this chapter, we'll take a look at the 14 most common diseases and examine their signs and symptoms, effects and treatment to give you a better understanding of the challenges we face. Tuberculosis or TB is a bacterial infection that attacks the lungs as well as bones, joints and brain in some people. While it can kill those who have it, often people will be infected but will not develop the disease. TB spreads through coughs and sneezes. People of all ages can get the disease, but it's usually children under three years old and those with poor immune systems who are most at risk. Co-infection is common amongst those with HIV AIDS. General weakness, weight loss, fever, night sweats and swollen glands are frequent symptoms. But sometimes children have TB with no symptoms other than failure to thrive and stunted growth. TB of the lungs is called pulmonary TB. Coughing up blood and chest pain are common symptoms. TB meningitis is also a serious complication that affects young children. People with TB must complete a course of therapy which usually includes taking two or more anti-TB drugs for at least six months. This treatment plan is called DOTS, which means Directly Observed Treatment Schedule. Multi-drug resistance can occur when people fail to take the medication as prescribed or if they are given the wrong treatment regimen. The polio virus is found in the faeces of people with polio and in water contaminated with infected faeces. It's transmitted by the faecal oral route. The virus multiplies in the stomach, enters the bloodstream and can damage certain types of nerve cells leading to paralysis. Most people with polio never feel ill and will develop natural immunity to the virus. Sometimes it will cause paralytic polio which starts with mild symptoms and fever then develops into severe muscle pain and paralysis. While the initial symptoms of muscle pain and fever can be managed, once a person is paralysed there is no treatment available to reverse it. They will remain crippled for life and will need rehabilitation and special care. They may die if the muscles controlling breathing are affected. Hepatitis B is caused by a virus that affects the liver. The virus is carried in the blood and other body fluids. It can be spread when a needle infected with the virus is shared with another person. It can also be transmitted to babies from infected mothers at birth or between children during social contact through cuts, scrapes, bites and scratches. A common way for transmission between adults is during sexual intercourse. Dark coloured urine and jaundice are common symptoms. Chronic hepatitis, cirrhosis, liver failure and liver cancer can occur in people with chronic infection. There is no treatment for acute hepatitis B infection. In chronic conditions, the disease can sometimes be stopped with medication. <laughs> diphtheria is a bacterial disease. Patients who have diphtheria will develop either a throat infection or ulcers on the skin. It can affect people of all ages, but mainly children, and is transmitted from person to person through coughing, sneezing or touching. If a throat infection develops, the patient may have a slight fever and may not feel like eating. As it gets worse, a bluish-white or grey membrane may develop in the back of the throat. This can bleed and become darker in colour when the disease gets serious. The most serious complications are a swollen neck and locked airway, which can cause death. If a child is infected with the disease, diphtheria antitoxin, if available, and antibiotics should be used for treatment. Pertussis or whooping cough is a bacterial infection that affects the airway. Children with this disease may have a runny nose, watery eyes and fever. Often within a week or two they start to have severe coughing spells that leave them exhausted. A high-pitched whoop at the end of a burst of coughing is common. The disease is passed between children and adults by coughing and sneezing. Pneumonia is the most common serious complication. Convulsions and seizures may also occur. This disease can put large groups of people, even whole villages, out of action for weeks or months. 
Infected children are treated with antibiotics and plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration. Cephinous bacteria live in the soil. The most common way to contract this disease is through dirty wounds and after birth when the umbilical cord is cut in unclean conditions. It is transmitted by direct contact with the spores of the bacterium. People of all ages can get tetanus, but women face a high risk of infection during unclean delivery or abortion. The disease is particularly common and serious in newborn babies. They can be infected during birth when hands or instruments are dirty or if soil material is used to dress the cord. Muscular stiffness in the jaw is the first sign. This is followed by a stiff neck, difficulty swallowing, muscle spasms, sweating and fever. Newborn babies with tetanus appear normal, but then stop sucking and become stiff or have convulsions. Death usually follows. Haemophilus influenzae type B disease, or HIV, is a bacterial infection which can cause pneumonia and meningitis, particularly in young children. The bacterium is generally found in the throat and nose and is spread through coughing and sneezing. The risk of the disease is highest in children between six months and two years of age. Sometimes a child may have the bacterium and show no signs of disease, but they are still able to spread it. Pneumonia is usually more common than meningitis in children with HIV. Those who have HIV meningitis are at risk of brain damage, hearing loss and mental retardation. HIV is treated by using appropriate antibiotics. Streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common cause of community-acquired pneumonia, or CAP, bacterial meningitis, bacteremia, and otitis media. Patients usually present with high fever, chills, and productive cough. Children aged between one month and five years are mainly at risk of the disease, with those less than two years old at the greatest risk of serious disease, particularly if they have not been breastfed. Adults older than 55 years and those with conditions such as HIV that cause lowered immunity are also at increased risk. Most patients can be treated with appropriate antibiotics. Infants and elderly patients as well as those with lowered immunity or underlying disease should be treated more aggressively in hospital if necessary. Rotavirus is the most common cause of severe diarrheal disease in young children. It is primarily transmitted by the faecal oral route from an infected person to others in the community and affects children in developing countries usually before their first birthday. The virus damages the lining of the intestine so that digestion and the absorption of micronutrients are reduced. Rotavirus causes a range of symptoms from mild diarrhea to gastroenteritis which can lead to dehydration and electrolyte disturbances, shock and even death. In typical cases, the onset of the disease is abrupt after a one to three day incubation period with fever, vomiting and then explosive diarrhea. The gastrointestinal symptoms normally disappear within three to seven days but may persist for up to two to three weeks. No specific antiviral therapy is available so supportive treatment is indicated which should include oral rehydration salts to replace fluids. Measles is caused by a highly infectious virus that tends to occur in epidemics. It can cause severe problems such as pneumonia, blindness, encephalitis and even death. That's why immunisation is so important. It spreads through coughing, sneezing or touching. In the early stages, the patient may have a cough, runny nose, red and watery eyes and small white spots inside the cheeks. A rash develops on the face and upper neck after several days and spreads to the rest of the body, even the hands and feet. This lasts for about five days. Children under five and those who are malnourished or have HIV AIDS are most at risk. They may suffer from severe diarrhea causing dehydration, middle ear inflammation and respiratory tract infection. Treatment of dehydration with oral rehydration salts, or ORS, is essential and all patients should be encouraged to eat and drink. Two doses of vitamin A should be given 24 hours apart. 
This can prevent blindness and reduces the number of deaths by as much as 50%. Rubella is a viral infection. When a pregnant woman is infected with the rubella virus, she has a 90% chance of passing it on to her fetus. This may result in death of the fetus, or congenital rubella syndrome, CRS, which is an important cause of birth defects such as deafness, cataracts, and heart and brain problems. Rubella is spread by airborne droplets when people sneeze or cough. In children, a rash is usually the first sign. A low fever and swollen lymph nodes are also possible. Infected adult women often experience pain in the joints or arthritis. There is no specific treatment for rubella or CRS. Patients should drink plenty of water and may take medication to reduce mild fever. Infants are treated for their specific problems. Yellow fever is caused by the yellow fever virus, which is carried by mosquitoes. Three to six days after infection, a person will develop fever, chills, headache, backache, general muscle pain, upset stomach and vomiting. There also may be bleeding from the gums and blood in the urine. Jaundice and black vomiting may occur. Because the signs and symptoms are similar to other diseases, a blood sample should be taken and sent to a laboratory to confirm the diagnosis. The disease usually lasts two weeks after which the patient either recovers or dies. Epidemics can occur when infected people return to an urban area where local Aedes aegypti mosquitoes feed on their blood and then transmit the virus to others. There is no specific treatment for yellow fever. Supportive management with ORS and antibiotics to treat any additional bacterial infection is the best approach. The ninjacoccal meningitis is caused by a bacterial infection of the brain and spinal cord. Epidemics of this disease in sub-Saharan Africa occur every two or three years. It is most common in young children, but is also found in young adults and amongst people living in crowded conditions. In the past, around 10% of those who contracted the disease died from it. Again, the bacterium is transmitted from person to person through airborne droplets caused by sneezing or coughing. Meningococcal meningitis can be suspected if a person has sudden onset of severe headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and a stiff neck. This disease should be regarded as a medical emergency. In children, untreated disease leads to a 50% mortality rate. Those who are treated early with several types of antibiotics have a 10 to 15% mortality. Genital human papillomavirus or HPV infections are usually transmitted through sexual contact. Most sexually active men and women will acquire an HPV infection at some time in their lives, but the majority will be benign. People with compromised immune systems caused by HIV or other infections are at higher risk of HPV infections. Persistent genital infection with certain types of HPV can lead to cancer. HPVs are believed to cause 100% of cervical cancers, at least 80% of anal cancer, and 40 to 60% of vulva, vaginal and penile cancers. Some types of HPV do not lead to cancer, but can be the cause of genital warts inside and outside the vagina or anus, or on the cervix or penis. Other HPVs don't cause symptoms at all. The most common symptoms in men are genital warts. The warts are flesh-coloured and can be raised or flat. They may also have a bumpy appearance like the head of a cauliflower. There is no known cure for HPV infections. However, most are cleared from the body with time by the immune system without treatment. Genital warts can be treated by using medications or by physically removing them. Vitamin A deficiency, VAD, is the leading cause of preventable blindness in children and increases the risk of disease and death from severe infections. In pregnant women, VAD causes night blindness and may increase the risk of maternal mortality. For children, lack of vitamin A causes severe visual impairment and blindness. 
and significantly increases the risk of severe illness and even death from such common childhood infections as diarrheal disease and measles. For pregnant women in high-risk areas, vitamin A deficiency occurs especially during the last trimester, when demand by both the unborn child and the mother is highest. The mother's deficiency is demonstrated by the high prevalence of night blindness during this period. Since breast milk is a natural source of vitamin A, promoting breastfeeding is the best way to protect babies from VAD. For deficient children, periodic high-dose vitamin A is a simple, low-cost solution that has produced remarkable results, reducing mortality by 23% overall and by up to 50% for acute measles sufferers. For vulnerable rural families in Africa, growing fruits and vegetables in home gardens contributes to better lifelong health.